Okay, good afternoon. I don't know if my first one went live, but this one I'm hoping is going live. Um, we are praying through the attributes of God, a guide to personal worship through prayer. We are on the attribute of God that is eternal. God is eternal. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemy before you. He is our eternal refuge. He is a refuge that will never falter, that will never fail, that we can always trust in because he is always there. Psalms 90 verse one. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before we chose God, God chose us. And because God chose us, we can trust that he is going to do what he says he's gonna do. Psalms 90 verse two. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I don't know about you, but that's amazing to me that before the foundation of the world, God was God. And when everything goes and passes away, God will still be God. Is God that God in your life today? If you are looking for a God that is eternal, that is hope, that is there, this is the God that you're seeking. Psalms 102, 27. You remain the same and your years will never end. God's years will never end. God is faithful. God is just. God's years will never end because he is eternal. And we can hope and we can trust in that. Isaiah 40, 28. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding cannot, no one can fathom. I don't know about you, but I get tired. I get weary. And I love my kids and I love my family, but I can't be everything for them. And God is the God that is there to be everything for us. God will never get tired. God will never grow weary. And God's understanding, we can't even comprehend. And that's the God we serve. Isaiah 46, 4. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. That's the God we serve. God is hopeful and God is faithful to be who he says he will be. I have made you and I will carry you. When you can't carry yourself, God can. When we can't rescue ourselves, God can. And that's the God we serve. Hebrews 9.14, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. We don't serve a God that's dead. We serve a God that's eternal, and we serve a God that is living. And that's the hope that we have. That's the faith that we have. 2 Peter 3.8 With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So the time frame that Jesus Christ died and has rose again, and we're waiting for him to return, is really just like a couple of days to him. We don't have to fear that when is he coming, when is he doing this. His time frame is not our time frame. He has a different time frame than we have, so we can trust that he will do what he says he's going to do. Revelations 4.8 says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. God is God. God is holy, God is just, God is powerful, and he was and is and is to come. God will do what he says he's going to do, and God will be who he says he's going to be. We can trust that because he is God Almighty in our lives. Because he was, he is, and he will come. And when you lack the faith to be able to do that, to be able to trust that God is God and we are not, is the hope that we have. Revelation 4.9 says, The living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever. If you're on your own throne right now, that might be why things are not going the way they should. God needs to be the center focus of our life. God needs to be on the throne. And if God is not on our throne, then that's where we fall short. Then that's where we're lacking. Then that's where we need to regain our fellowship back with God, our eternal God, our eternal Father. Revelation 16, 5. You are just in these judgments, you who are and who were, the Holy One, because you have so judged. God is a righteous judge. We can trust that his judgment is fair and true and that he will do what he says he's going to do. He is the only righteous judge. And we can't expect people that have fallen to be the righteousness that we want to see in our God. Only God can be that righteousness. And when 
men fall short, we can't get upset because they're, they are, they are fallen creatures, right? We are not God. So we need to trust that God is God. We are not. Others are not. And God will take care of what he says he's going to take care of. Now comes to, that was our adoration of God as the eternal God. Now is our confession. Our confession of God being God and we are not. Forgive me, Lord, for sometimes forgetting that you are eternal and for not thanking you for your eternal love for me. I also waste much time on things that are not of eternal value. I can't tell you. I'm so guilty of not doing these live streams, of not doing what God had laid on my heart to do. And it's not for everybody to do, but God had laid it on my heart, and I wasn't being faithful, and I wasn't wanting to do what he told me to do. And I was wasting my time on things that had no eternal value. And I just pray that if you are wasting your time on things that have no eternal value, wake up. Wake up because time is short. God is eternal. We are not. Your time is short. Cleanse my life of such things, reminding me that I will live with you forever. Therefore, it matters what I do now. What you do now matters eternally. It has eternal value, whether it's going to be an eternal reward in heaven or if it's something that has no eternal value and will be cast aside. I must use these days in preparation for eternity. We will all spend eternity somewhere. We will either spend eternity living with God or dying without Him. What is your choice today? What is your choice today? Now is our point of thanksgiving. We started with the adoration of God as being eternal. We went to the confession of God being eternal and we are not trusting anything that are not eternal and should be trusting God that is eternal. And now we're on thanksgiving. Thank you for being eternal and for giving me eternal life with you. Thank you that you are my refuge and that your arms underneath me are everlasting. That's Deuteronomy 33, 27. Thank you that you have always been my dwelling place and that you always will be. Psalms 90, verse 1. We can be thankful that we have an eternal dwelling place. We may not have a place here that we want to call home, but we have a home in heaven. Thank you that because you were before everything, you created everything. Psalms 90, verse 2. We can know that God created everything, that God in God, all things will hold together. Thank you that you will always remain the same. Psalms 102, 27. We know that God will always remain the same. God will be God. God was God. God will be God and he will always be God. And it doesn't matter what your situation is. God is still in control. Thank you that you will never grow tired or weary. Isaiah 40, verse 27. God will never grow tired or weary. We get tired. We will fall short. We will have to sleep. But God never does. And because of that, he is always watching over us. Thank you that even in my old age, you will sustain me. You have made me and you will carry me. Isaiah 46, 4. God carries us. We don't have to carry ourselves. We don't have to have enough power within ourselves. We can trust that God can. And that's the, that's the faith that we have. Thank you that the blood of Christ through eternal spirit will cleanse my conscience so that I may serve you. God wants to cleanse our conscience. God wants us to serve him with our whole heart. And when we are right with God, God will bless our lives abundantly. Does that mean we won't have problems? No. It means that in God, we will be able to trust in him through all things. Thank you that the blood of Christ, the eternal spirit, will cleanse the punch that I you put you on my ankle. You are outside of time. I can't put God on my timetable. You, God, are outside of time. You need me on your timetable. We are where we are for such a time as this. God knew exactly where we were supposed to be right now. God knows where Trust that God is in control and nothing else can stop him. Thank you that all creatures, including me, will spend eternity praising you and giving you glory, honor, and thanks. We will all give God glory, honor, and thanks. Will we or being made to? And that's our choice, right? The last verse is, thank you that you are just in your judgments, not because you were always... Thank you that you are just in your judgments, not now, because you are always just. God is always just. Nothing in this world will ever be 100% right. Only God. Only God. And through God, we can trust that He will have our back, that He will defend us, 
that he will be our vengeance, that he will be our voice, and that he will see us through when nothing else can. So now is our point four. We started with adoration for God as being the eternal God. We went to confession of God as being the eternal God, and we are not. We went to thanksgiving of God, being eternal, and trusting that he is eternal and thanking him for that eternity in our lives. And now we have supplication. And in that supplication, it's where we can lift up prayer requests to the Lord. And if you have any prayer requests, you're more than welcome to join in and leave them. And I will pray for them. We're lifting up our friend with her daughter going to UC Irvine. She's praying for all of her funding to come in. So we're in prayer with her for that as well. We're lifting up uh, Linda Montoya. She has cancer. We're lifting up and praying for healing from that. Um, we're also lifting up, if you could, myself and me doing these live streams. I pray that they are a blessing, that you would use them and share them, and they would be able to reach those that they need to reach. Um, a praise report for Jimmy and I for our photo booth. Jimmy had photography for his photo booth. It has actually taken off just since yesterday. We got two, three con jobs confirmed, and we're just, it's a blessing, and we're able to give it back to God, and we're just very thankful for that. So continue to keep Jimmy Head Photography and his photo booth in your prayers. Um, prayer for my, my marriage, for Jimmy and I, and for my kids, for Sean and Ashley, for Josh and Raquel, for Trinity and Andrew, and for Cindy and Arrow. Um, prayer for Margie Ruano and her children. Um, anybody else that would like to lift up prayer requests, I would love to be able to do that. I know there was a lady that, um, her husband at his back, and he was gonna have to go to work today, and we're, I've been in prayer for her as well, and we wanna continue to lift up that lady in prayer. I don't remember her name, and I pray that she would know who this is for. And I just am thankful. I'm thankful that I have the ability to do this. For those of you that don't know, I am doing this because in 2015, I had two herniated discs, and I wasn't supposed to be able to walk without uh, back surgery. God healed it and has been faithful to continue to allow me to get better. And because of that, I wanna give back to God what he's given to me. So I hope that this is a blessing to you and I pray that you would use this as a witnessing tool to those around you. And I thank you and I praise God for this time. See you guys later.